So uh, just uh, to touch on a few things, um, how did you get interested in entomology? Well, let it be known, and I, I tell all my students when it's appropriate that I've been a bug geek all my life. I used to help, you know, 10th graders do their insect collections when I was in elementary grades and they were sophomores to seniors in high school. So I've always had an interest in insects. Uh, and I started fly fishing and fly tying when I was between 11 and 12 years old. Mm -hmm. So that you can see that connection. And I think that's what really uh, intensified my interest, especially with aquatic insects and more so with the, the wonderful world of mayflies. Mm -hmm. That's funny because I was going to ask chicken, bef chicken or the egg kind of thing. Were you interested in fly fishing prior to entomology? Or I, I really think way? the fly fishing aspect of it really got me more mm -hmm. interested in and in more depth about aquatic insects. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and again, you can't just study one particular group and, and uh, you know, you know how important terrestrial insects are as, yeah. as trout food and and food for bass and so on. So uh, whether it's periodical cicadas, whether it's carpenter ants or mayflies, stoneflies or caddisflies, uh, they're all all uh, important uh, for the survival of um, things with fins and things with feathers and hair. Yeah, really, it's the, the whole cycle of life. Yep. It's, um, it's, it's, it's nice when I see a light bulb go off with a student I have out and they get that it's more than just catching a fish. <laughs> yeah, it's you know the whole thing. Yep. And, yeah, uh, it's it's a lot of people and, and Jack Hess and Scott Logner and I float the the yak a couple times a year and and that's one of Jack's comments that a lot of people miss mm -hmm. the the sounds and and even recognizing what those sounds are as a part of the whole fly fishing experience and yeah I I kind of feel sad for those who don't. Take it all in. There's a famous saying somewhere along the line: um, "It's a sad, sad soul that th or sad fisherman that thinks that fishing is only the fish." Yeah. And you just touched on something. I, I uh, I'd love to write a piece or something about this, but each stream has a different sound, like a different care. It's its own voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah whether it's stuff. wildlife, whether it's its flow, you know, steep gradient versus you know a slow meandering groundwater spring fed stream yes. that's truly the case yeah yeah um so um you know favorite stream in pennsylvania wow <laughs> you know i'm not trying to uh, avoid the question i've got so many i'm not sure um top three i could say that well even even top three i i, I probably uh can be narrowed down to one and it's because it goes back to my boy scout years uh, I had the good fortune to have uh, belonged to a troop in northern Dauphin County that would spend a week at Poe Patty State Park on Penn's Creek. And so uh, because of, of, you know, earlier years up until the present, um, and then including, I, I tell my wife, of almost 40 years that if I go, so to speak, prematurely, feel free to put my ashes in Penn's Creek. So that's, that's why... I, if, if, as your question was posed, Penn's Creek, but I recently have really started to enjoy Pine Creek. Uh, obviously, Slate and Cedar Run are fantastic. And another place um, is Fishing Creek in Clinton County. There's no thermal stressed fish there. I didn't uh, know that. It's been years. Wild since brown trout and wild brook trout. Uh, just a fantastic uh, fishery. I fished it 20 years ago, it was the last time I've been there. and. What I remember is deep, clear pools and these beautiful washouts at the end of the pools with those almost all the same size stones. Gravel or pebble. Yeah, yeah well, that's, really cool. That's real good spawning uh, substrate for, for wild wild trout. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, Pit Po Patty has a, a special place in my heart. Um, just as a younger angler, um, Cutting my teeth on central PA streams and, and sleeping in those lean twos. Yeah, and just yep. just good stuff. Yep, you know, yep. good stuff. Um, yeah, favorite hatch. Hmm. Well, I, I kind of let it be known today. Uh, it's not the green drake. It's not the sulfur. <laughs> it's not the trico. It's not the white fly. It would be the blue winged olives that are in the same family as the sulfurs. It's because of the circumstances where you can fish to duns emerging in late morning, and you can fish to spinner falls at night when you can see what you're doing. 
that's that's uh, becoming my favorite because a lot of people don't make it a point to meet and fish that hatch and I guess that's why it's becoming more enjoyable for me because you don't have the pressure that you do with some of those other hatches. Funny because it's two things I hear. One is how through an angler's life things interest your interests change. I find that and I can see, you know, yeah. I bet you the blue winged olive wasn't your favorite through oh, your no, entire life. It, it right? wasn't, right. exactly. You, you, I, I remember, and I've probably, in the 26 plus years I've been at Penn State, I probably fished the green drake hatch less since I've been at Penn State's main campus. Prior to that, it was always something that was on the to-do list to drive from a northern Dolphin County to Union and, and Mifflin counties to fish yeah, the sure. green drake. So yeah, you're the absolutely correct. Green, it's changed. Yeah. Okay. okay. So we've talked about your favorite hatch, which I found interesting. Um, I want to talk with about the green drake, but we'll save that for another time. Okay. Um, but um, favorite hatch in the U.S. or, or abroad? Hmm. Probably because of its similarity and, and also distribution. Um, Hexagenia limbata, or what the folks in the Midwest call the hex, mm -hmm. short for the, the breed, so to speak, uh, the genus. Because of the, the simil similarities uh, about night fishing and the similarities of a big burrowing mayfly and, mm -hmm. and uh, the fact that it often entices larger fish to take a dry fly. Yes. That's, you know, and, and then the sounds. You know, uh, I, I once uh, had the opportunity to float with uh, the late Rusty Gates on what he called the, the whale water, and we <laughs> boated in from the Mayo Reservoir back up into the river. And uh, that night, as we floated out in the Osable River boat, which, you know, doesn't have a lot of freeboard, um, it was as important to get a drag-free drift of a big burrowing mayfly in those circumstances and what I'll never forget, you had to differentiate rise forms of big fish from beaver tails slapping on the water. <laughs> wow. I mean, it, it was quite a, you know, uh, an experience just from the sounds uh, at dark and, and uh, what we were hoping to get when that big burrowing mayfly was emerging. Interesting. Drag-free drift at night, that seems oh, like... Oh, yeah. You well, know, you like, think, who would have thought yeah, that? Yeah, why know? is that important? But yeah. it was. Yeah. And, and if you didn't, you weren't getting the attention of that fish. So you just mentioned uh, I was gonna I thought I was gonna ask you favorite water in the U.S. but I could bet it's a Michigan. Uh, I, I used to say when somebody said, uh, "What are you gonna do when you retire?" Yeah. And and one of my distant passions is I love to archery hunt whitetails, and uh, you know I always said it would be in a state that starts with an M, and Michigan and Montana were, <laughs> were, were the two. Right. Now I don't know because. You know, growing up, you know, around freshwater scenarios, uh, my folks had a place in Venice, Florida. And uh, my wife and I last May went to uh, Siesta Key and walking the beach at night and throwing flies for snook that are, you know, not that far away from where your feet are and never knowing what you're going to get into. Um, I could do Florida for a little bit, yeah, but I'd still get back to those states that start with an M. For other, uh, You're other just gonna have to snowbird it, right? I guess. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My dad used to refer to those folks because he became a resident in Florida as snowflakes ah. because of the driving um, lack of driving <laughs> ability. Skills. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Thirty seconds left. Okay. Um, advice to beginning anglers: um, Align yourself with a, uh, a knowledgeable fly shop and uh, get to know some people there that can really uh, expedite your uh, gathering of knowledge so that you don't have a lot of frustration, that you uh, learn the right way in the beginning. And I think uh, uh, you need to know that it's a sport for a lifetime.